Hello, goaltending students. My name is Guillaume Duclair. Welcome to Goalie Smarts. Any goaltender that hasn't had a stroke knows and appreciates Patrick Waugh to varying degrees. Some extremists have a stuffed animal version of him and talk to him before they go to sleep. I, for one, am not too bad. I just wish that he was my dad. You know, my father is cool and all, but he's no Patrick Waugh. Patrick Waugh was the savage. Any goaltender would want to have his life. I, for one, would love to have the biggest city in Quebec obsessed with me. I would love to have scores of French girls crowd my dick like a tourist attraction while doing coke in a Montreal club while 90s rave music is blaring, making my eardrums bleed. But that is something only St. Patrick can do. He was cocky, talented, brutal, and like all other goaltenders, completely insane. Just to be clear, my young impressionable students, cocaine is really bad. That shit will make you fight imaginary cowboys and get charged with assaulting a police officer. Don't find that out on your own. I've already done it for you. That being said, it is the 33rd episode of Goalie Smarts, and I would be stupid not to dedicate this episode to St. Patrick. So in this episode of Goalie Smarts, I'm going to teach you how you can be just like the greatest goaltender of all time. This is Goalie Smarts episode 33, how to beat Patrick Waugh. Step one, be very cocky. Patrick Waugh was known for his flashiness and his confidence. So if you want to be like Patrick Waugh, you're going to have to do the same. Windmilling every glove save is not enough. You should be doing that already. A good place to start would be to hold up your glove after every glove save you make, even if it means letting up a goal. Now, being cocky is a very broad expression. You can take this however far you legally can. Step two, be really, really good. You don't become the greatest goaltender of all time by sitting around, eating pizza, taking dabs, and playing junior E. If you want to be ahead of the pack, you are going to have to do things the rest of the pack isn't willing to do. This means that not only do you have to take games, practices, and off-ice training super, super seriously, this means you have to make games, practices, and off-ice training 100% your life. Unfortunately, if you live in America, there are a little bit too many variables. What I would do is move to the wilderness of Quebec and beg some lumberjack to become my father. You see, this is how St. Patrick grew up, so you might as well do the same. It's impossible not to have blisteringly fast hockey goalie reflexes when your dad forces you onto a frozen pond every morning and fires 700 pucks at you because you look like your mother. Think about all the off-ice training you'll get hauling around logs and barrels of maple sap. Also, think about all the reflex training you'll get when your dad hauls whiskey bottles at you. Step three, learn how to dangle. Patrick Waugh not only knew how to stop pucks, but he knew how to stick handle. One legendary moment of his career was when he dangled around Wayne Gretzky, the greatest hockey player of all time, and made him look like a confused orangutan on Xanax. This is especially impressive because hockey goalies have much less control of their sticks. That goes to show you that hockey goalies are better than everyone at anything. So if you're going to develop silky smooth hands like the slightly feminine Sidney Crosby who always uses lotion, I would learn the way Patrick learned when he was growing up. How did he do it? YouTube tutorials, of course. Patrick Waugh loved watching YouTube growing up. In fact, he's actually earned some incredible YouTube achievements. For instance, he always commented first on a new episode of Goalie Smarts. He also used to talk mad shit about 1970s Bruins goalie Jerry Cheevers because he was a hardcore Habs fan. Step four, invent a new style. Patrick Waugh is known for either inventing or perfecting the butterfly style. This revolutionary way of playing goalie changed the game forever. Before Patrick came around, goalies used to stand straight up and they wouldn't really save the puck. They would more or less have a small seizure in the direction of the puck. They used to just flail their arms in a very frightening manner, like a chimpanzee getting tasered. But Patrick turned goaltending into a science. It made goaltending more efficient and transformed the position from a mental disorder to a pussy magnet. You see, nowadays, pads wall out and can be used to move side to side. Since Patrick changed the game and is known as the greatest of all time, if you want to be the GOAT, you're going to have to do the same thing. That being said, I have invented a new style of goaltending, and it's called Head Trajectory Goaltending. The name pretty much says it all. You see, because in traditional goaltending, you extend your glove, blocker, or pad out to make a save. You track the puck with your eyes and into your glove. 
But you see, when you do this, you lose the true visual perspective of where the puck is gonna hit. Head trajectory goaltending skips all of that guesswork. Basically, you just use your head to try to stop the puck. This way, you keep as much true visual perspective as to where the puck is going. You know you're out of position if you don't see a black rubber disc flying towards your face. This summer, I'm opening up international goalie camps to teach this new style of goaltending, and if you're not there, you don't matter to me. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Goalie Smarts. This episode was actually suggested by three different people. CS Imlatch, Austin Dunbar, and Ivan Mazur. Yeah. Anyways, if you think you have an idea that could be in one of these videos, do everyone a favor and share it. Share it with someone who cares, like me. I care. Otherwise, I'm Guillaume Duclair, and I'm out. Bitches.